right, how I built my gas fire video number six. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the plumbing. How I, how I connect my gasifier to my, uh, my generator. And uh, what I've done is uh, I touched a little bit of, uh, on this on the last video. This is a three quarter inch ball valve. This is three quarter inch plumbing. This is my hose and carburetor set up. For, uh, for my gasifier to my generator, and this is all three quarter inch, uh, just for future reference. We'll get into more detail about this. Um, I wanted to use cam locks. I don't know if you're familiar with cam locks. Basically, there's a female and a male cam lock. They slip together, and then these cam over and lock the hose on. Um, they're really handy. Do you have to use them? Absolutely not. Um, you know, we use them in, in one inch at my work, so. You know, I, I have quite a bit of experience with them. I, I know their weaknesses and their strengths, and I knew that this was this was what I wanted to use to connect my gasifier to my generator. Um, you absolutely do not have to use these. If you wanted to, um, you know, instead of having this this male cam lock poking out of the end of my ball valve, um, you could use anything. You could use a king nipple, uh, you know, or whatever you could to chat, attach a hose to there. It, there's really no specific right or wrong way to do this. Uh, I just did it because I wanted it to remove easily. So, on to the plumbing. Um, just the plain old hose end. This is what I actually connect onto my gasifier. And, uh, this end is my carburetor. This is what connects up to my generator. Um, it's really simple. Uh, again, on my generator I have another male cam lock fitting and this female just slips on, locks in place and you're done. Um, does it have to be that way? No, absolutely not. You know, any way you can figure to cut a hole in your... Uh, in your uh, I, I cut a hole into my air filter housing and, and plumbed in that male fitting. Um, some people completely bypass the carburetor and throw it away, just build a little plate and bolt to your intake. I didn't do that because uh, I wanted to leave the carburetor there because it, my generator and most generators have their own load sensor. Uh, depending on how much power you're pulling, they will give themselves more gas or less gas uh, to keep the power you know, as stable as possible. My generator happens to be one of those, and I wanted that feature hooked up, so I left the carburetor on. Even though there's no fuel tank or fuel, that still works. Um, so anyhow, on to my carburetor, which is nothing more than a couple of three-quarter inch ball valves. Your gas travels through this hose. This is your gas ball valve. How much fuel, how much wood gas you want to give it. Uh, this then runs into a T, nothing special, and then out to another three-quarter inch ball valve. This is your oxygen, because your engine will be pulling a vacuum through the center here. It will be pulling this wood gas, and then you will be adding or taking away oxygen to get it to run uh, at, at a correct RPM. Uh, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. I'll come up close here. I've got little Sharpie marks that kind of correspond with where my gasifier and generator like to run. I don't know if you can see those very well, but there's just some little Sharpie marks here. And basically that tells me where I need to set the gas. Um, where I need to set the gas, where I need to set the oxygen. Um, the oxygen is, is very, very picky. While you can play around with the gas some while the generator's running, the oxygen has just, we're talking maybe an eighth of an inch each way, if that, and it runs horrible. So, if this is your first time hooking up to a generator, the first time you're going to be running, you know, uh, an engine on your gasifier, it, it took me quite an amount of time to figure out messing with these valves where they should be. It's about a one-to-one -one ratio. If this one's halfway open, this one's going to be halfway open or remotely close. So that'll give you a place to start. But uh, you know, you'll have to play with your valves, and this is where an electric start motor comes in really handy because they're, the first startup is going to take a little while. You know, be patient with it. Take your time. Don't get frustrated because it's easy to do, especially if you got a pull start and you're sweating your ass off pulling for an hour and a half. But, uh, you know, these.
These don't have to be these brass ball valves. I've seen people use PVC. Number one, PVC is a whole lot less expensive. It's a lot lighter of a material. Um, it's fairly easy to get, you know, any hardware store is probably going to have it. And, you know, there is no right or wrong. I'm not going to tell you, do it this way, you know, or do it that way. <coughs> the main reason I went with the brass ball valves are just because I have a lot of experience uh, with them at my work. And, and I can get them easily through my suppliers at work on a, uh, a revolving account. So they are kind of spendy there. I think they were about $14 a piece. I, I have three of them, two here and one back on my gasifier. You do the math, you know. That inch and a quarter ball valve was, I want to say, about $35 to $40. So there's quite a bit of money in ball, ball valves, and you can do it a lot cheaper. Um, I've seen some people on this oxygen ball valve <coughs> that didn't even have a ball valve here. It was just a T with a piece of pipe sticking out and they had actually used duct tape as their valve. They would stick the tape over the end of it, you know, partially covering the opening, and they would adjust it by moving the tape one way or the other. Um, that way they only needed one single ball valve. Uh, this hose, this is three-quarter inch Tiger Flex hose. And we'll try to get close here so you can kind of get an eye on it. It's a clear hose. You can see through it. Um, it's got some sort of, I, I don't know if that's what that is, some sort of spiral round plastic inside of it to give it some strength, uh, keep it from collapsing. Uh, the only reason I went with this hose is because it's, again, something I use at my work. Uh, it's readily available to me, and it's clear. I like being able to see what's going on there uh, inside my hose, look to, you know, check for condensation and things. So, you know, that's why I went with this hose. There's no right or wrong hose. If you want to go with a, a garden hose, great, go with that. If you, you know, be creative. Whatever you want to use, it really doesn't matter. Um, so long as it's airtight and the gas can get from point A to point B, it's going to work. Um, ball valves, again, you know, you don't have to use ball valves. I've seen people also use, uh, go to the hardware store and get, like, outdoor faucets, like for your garden hose. I've seen them plumb into outdoor faucets and use those as the valves. So there's really no wrong way to do this, you know. Um, so long as you're airtight, it ought to work. So there is, you know, there's how I made it. This is going to be the plumbing and carburation section. Um, please rate and comment, you know. Again, like I've said several times, I definitely don't know it all. I'm no expert at gasifiers, but I do know what I did and why I did it, uh, whether or not it worked and whether or not I'd do it again. This has been a great setup for me. Uh, if you can afford them, uh, they're really not that expensive. These cam lock fittings are very handy. I mean, as far as hooking them up, you just open it, flip it on, cam over each side, and, and it's hooked up. It's that simple. Um, you know, I really like them, and removing them is the same way. Does this have to be removable? No. You could have a hose that were permanently on there and, you know, just laid on the ground with a valve to shut it off, you know. That would be fine. It doesn't have to remove. I just like the idea of being able to remove this, and especially on this end, if I were going to run, you know, several different things. Let's say I have my generator, I wanted to run a chipper, I wanted to run something else. Well, I wouldn't have to, you know, unscrew plumbing or, or whatever the case to get it from motor to motor to motor. I could just pull these cam locks, slip it off, slip it on the next motor. So that's why I went with those. It's not a necessity again. But if you'd like to, it, it makes life really handy. So, there it is. That's how I built my gasifier number six, plumbing. Please rate and comment.